Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. I headed to the hills after learning of my wife's affair. Part 2. <laughs> Kathy came out and inquired as to where I'd been. I approached her and inquired as to where she had been. You know I went to have some, she says. Are you having an affair? I questioned flatly. She appears surprised, but quickly regains her calm and answers, No, why would you ask me that? I inform her that I have heard she is connected with someone from work. She inquires, Who told you that? I tell her about someone I know but won't say who it is. She just tells me that I'm being foolish and that I'm drunk and crazy, and inquires as to my whereabouts. I invite her to join me at a pub for a few drinks with some pals. She simply looks at me, wanting to ask me more questions, but instead returns to our bedroom and goes back to sleep. I opted to sleep on the sofa since I now had proof that she has been lying to me for months. I didn't sleep at all, and I start imaging her in bed with this person, and I'm disgusted, wounded, and sad for myself. However, I am reminded of Ray's trailer. It's almost a revelation, and just thinking about it made me feel better. I must have done something wrong, but with the agony I was in, the fight or flight response simply immediately kicked in, and the flight part triumphed. We don't say anything the following morning and continue about our weekend as if nothing had occurred. I made arrangements to see Ray a few days later. I met Ray at his house. He has a large ranch, and the trailer is really very good, measuring around 26 in length and equipped with all of the basics for living. I took one with some pals over spring break in college and had a great time. I make Ray an offer on it, and he accepts I almost take it from him. He gives me instructions to his ranch, and I go there to look it over. It's stunning. It's densely forested, with scrub brush, and it seems to be surrounded by hiking and bicycle paths. It's at the foothills of some mountains, and Ray has a modest hut, sweetly towards me. But, in my opinion, it is too little, too late. As she continued her business trips after work, I decided I wanted a break as well. In fact, while she was getting ready for the evening, I was getting ready as well. She glanced at me and inquired as to where I was headed. I just said that I was meeting up with some buddies. She began to inquire, and I just informed her that she didn't know them and that she wouldn't appreciate all the business stuff. This is precisely what she would say when I asked if I might accompany her on one of her professional excursions. She has a wounded expression on her face and replies, Okay, have a great time. I said unequivocally that I would. I'd begun to make new acquaintances as a result of my work on the trailer and my meetings with Ray at the bar. In reality, it has resulted in some amazing moments with Ray's friends and family. And in case anybody is curious, I chose to reduce my drinking in order to avoid developing negative habits. It would be all too simple to bury myself in self-pity. Around this time, Kathy informs me she has a business trip the next week. I ask who is going, and she says the executive team and several department heads. I just glance at her and tell her that I hope she has a wonderful time with her lover. I sort of wish I hadn't said it since it sparked a lot of back and forth. In many respects, I wish I knew more about her AP, but as Ray put it, in the end, it doesn't matter who the other person is. What counts is that she chose to walk out on you. She destroyed the marriage. She may admit it or deny it, but facts are facts, brother. Ray should write all of this down and publish it for the deceived. Her business trip gave me the chance to totally clear out the remainder of my belongings. So once Kathy went for her trip, I grabbed everything I had left of any worth and loaded it into my truck. I'm not bringing any furniture or other items, so it'll just be clothing and work laptops and on a hill overlooking the land, complete with running water and electricity for the trailer. Ray will transport the travel trailer to the campsite and put it up for me. I attempted to get Kathy to come clean over the following several weeks, but all I got was gaslighting. I even warn her that if I find out she is cheating, there would be no turning back. This has the opposite effect of pushing her further into her affair fog and stinging me with denials. The denial is so awful that I nearly laughed. I have no tangible evidence of her cheating, and I curse myself for not photographing the two of them. As I go through this mental anguish, I realize I want out of this marriage. Rather of telling Kathy how I feel right now, I start creating plans. 
While she was at work, I began quietly removing my items from the apartment and transporting them to the trailer. This at least gives me the impression that I'm doing action. Kathy has changed throughout this period, and she has been behaving. Fwitment. I had prepared a message for her before I left, but after rereading it, I decided to keep it simple. I took out a piece of paper and scribbled, I hope that was worthwhile. My wedding ring was put on top of the message on the kitchen table. I felt a tremendous weight lift off of me. I felt liberated, no more concealing the truth. I know I'll have baggage to deal with and pain to overcome, but I'll have time to recover now. I simply need some breathing room and to remove her out of my life as discreetly and swiftly as possible. I'm not proud of myself for not confronting her more or coaxing a confession from her. I never got to rage, scream, or hate her after she confessed. I'd come to the conclusion that she didn't deserve me, she treated all we had with disdain. Our future ambitions are a thing of the past. We were putting money up for a home and a future family. That's all gone now. There is no turning back. I owe her absolutely nothing. She is capable of dealing with the consequences. Aftermath. I didn't have any kind of plan. I didn't even call a lawyer. I was simply looking for some clarification. I loved my new camper, and the fresh mountain air was just what I needed. I resumed jogging the next week, and it felt amazing to be alive. I didn't respond to any of Kathy's messages while she was abroad. There wasn't much to say in response. They were merely highlights, such as, we just arrived, we're having a team meal and so on. She did send a couple where are yous, let me hear from yous and so on. My phone exploded up the day she arrived home. She texted me all the time and attempted to call me all the time. Her mother attempted to contact me after the first day. My father is the only remaining member of my family on my father's side, and we aren't close, so she didn't attempt to engage him. I didn't bother listening to the rest of her voicemails after the first few sobbing messages. What is this? She would ask in her messages. We must communicate. I'm not sure what you believe you know, but nothing is going on. I'm not associated with anybody. I haven't had an affair. After a week of silence, she eventually texts me, saying, I'm sorry, things got out of hand. I was dating someone at work, but it didn't mean anything. I became distracted by my job, and you were gone a lot, and I just made a mistake. I was going to put a stop to it. Is that a typo? This was the revelation I had been looking for all along. For some reason, it just served to increase my disdain for her. Why couldn't she be truthful? This was not the lady with whom I had hoped to have a future. And how long do errors linger? Six dash eight months or a year. Her desire for me to return and work on the marriage grew sad at one point. She stopped harassing me for a few weeks. I still refused to respond to her. I didn't want her prying anything from me where I was living. I didn't want this lady to desecrate my sanctuary. Then, all of a sudden, she began sending me nasty messages. Like you are a coward. You're not going to speak to me. You don't give up about us. Please return home so that we can chat. Where have you gone? I'm willing to come to you. Please, Paul? Let's chat and work things out. I don't recall all of the texts, but they all seem to be excuses with little apologies. I let it all pass through one ear and out the other. I finally got around to changing my mobile phone number. June 2018 Update Kathy emailed me to say she had hired a lawyer and was filing for divorce. Okay, sounds nice, I answered in my response. This followed in a barrage of emails requesting that I meet with her and so on. She understood this wasn't going to get her anywhere. So she simply wrote that if I agreed to an uncontested divorce, she wouldn't bother me again. I accepted, and some months later, I was finally a free man. I never had to see her again when I moved out of our apartment. There was no closure for any of us, but it felt like she valued it more than I did. For a few months, I did think about her sometimes, and sure, the grief would come out of nowhere like when I heard a song on the radio that we used to listen to and so on. But after a while, I simply stopped thinking about her. Update no to so, I am now officially divorced. Things are looking up now. In truth, I met a wonderful woman. I went for a run on the path just down the hill from my house. I assisted her in changing a flat tire, and we got along well. She's beautiful and adorable, despite being a few years younger than myself.
She loves my way of life and refers to me as her mountain guy. I'm not in any rush to become serious, but I'm also not ready to give up on women entirely. I'm still inside the trailer. I have no intentions to alter any time soon and I've greatly streamlined my life. I like being outside. It assisted me in getting over my ex-wife, the heartbreak, and everything else. I understand that everyone handles these situations differently. I was fortunate not to have children at the time, and I was just in my third year of marriage, so I believe I did what was best for me. You don't have to spend your life with a liar. If anything similar occurs to you, please don't linger on it. Instead, go on with your life. It improves once you work on yourself. I wish everyone the greatest life possible.